I was four. <laughs> Pretty much true. I, from the time I can remember, I liked to draw and I always, uh, when anyone asked me, I said I'd be an artist. Either that or a hockey player. Drawing was my thing and uh, it was reinforced from the time I was young, so I always wanted to be an artist. Not too much, pr no printmaking in high school. A lot of drawing, a lot of painting, a little bit of sculpture, but it wasn't my thing. So really two-dimensional work. Very figurative and often just things I really love. So a lot of my drawings came from sports and you know some of them came from looking at art books and art pictures uh, when I became more aware that being an artist was more than just drawing about pop culture. So I did a lot of cartoons, things like that, but mostly, mostly real representation drawing, things that interested me to draw. That was just almost for entertaining myself in many ways. Well, I grew up in Toronto. My parents both were immigrants from Italy, and they both encouraged us to go to college. And I ended up at the University of Windsor, Ontario. Interesting faculty, because some came from the US and some from Canada. I thought I would be a painter until I discovered lithography, which then I thought that was great because it really combined all the things I loved with a kind of technology and learning something that I had no idea uh, about before I entered college. So it seemed like so something that sort of um, sort of suited my working class sensibility to working with my hands, working with machinery, learning a, a technical skill. You know, the work always builds on itself. I think asking new questions and sometimes it comes through discovery of process. So I've been working, as you know, with uh, a number of different mixed media processes in printmaking. And in the past series, the Storm series, I, I used both uh, these discarded plates in combination with digital mapping and ideas about psychogeographies and these disruptions of you know weather patterns patterns but more of a, a as a metaphor than literally to be taken literally you know talking about how the world's connected and disconnected and, and how one thing in fa affects another in developing that vocabulary i also uh, got excited about using these discarded plates that come from architecture studios because I see thousands of them going, the negative part of the plate being, being disposed of every semester. So I started collecting these and seeing uh, a kind of mapping. The patterns and, and the geometries were kind of interesting because I can sort of take all of this waste material and start to draw with it because it's, it's, it's essentially plastic material. And then it was, it's perfect for relief printing. So I started to experiment with uh, them in a more playful way, but with references to historical um, ideas about what geometry meant. Uh, like, for example, in Russian constructivist kind of ideas that, and cubism and different ideas about uh, Matisse's ideas about patterns. There was lots of historical references for these materials. And I like the play with art history, so it sort of also allowed me to sort of think about politically what does it mean to make abstractions in the 21st century at one, on one level, but these were also things that come from the studio, so they have this representational quality, this honesty to them because they're, they're actual things that are, people are using to make architectural models, but these are the discarded parts, so I like the irony embedded in all of that. And because they're from architectural models, they also have uh, a lot of references to, uh, you, can, you can use them to make references to urban spaces and I like to be able to play with that, that, those motifs. Part of my, my interest is in how uh, old and new technologies both evolve and, and uh, sometimes that hybridity of the old and the new. So this is a, uh, a, you know, one of the oldest sort of forms of printmaking is relief printmaking, simple, simply you know, taking something and rubbing it even, you know, but these are printed on presses or hydraulic you know, presses or, or manual presses. But the, uh, in a way, there's a simplicity to these, but they're using digital technologies to cut the plates, laser cut the plates. So you've got this sort of old and new and this marriage of old and new. And I like that notion, just the sort of evolution and the evolving sort of um, history of, of, that, of printmaking as a practice. Well, the, the thing about this series is I started to uh, create this sort of taxonomy of images and I started to group them into different kinds of, you'll start to see different shapes, you know, whether the simple tri triangles or circles, but then more complex geometries. And I started to categorize them and, uh, 
and, and, and lay them out into these sort of things as if they were lost artifacts and why were these things reoccurring, why were these negative re reoccurring shapes, you know, uh, without having evidence of the actual models that they had built from them. So this accumulation of, of these plates uh, are separated from what their actual uh, model is and so I was taking them apart as if I found you know something in the sand you know it's different artifacts and starting to to create a taxonomy of images with them and then I started to uh, compose with them essentially draw with them or paint with them but as forms and organize them in such a way and then I started to you know use color and so they're very colorful prints they sort of again they have references to uh, you know mid mid-century modernism and early you know 20th century uh, ideas uh, a lot of times people will feel a familiar familiar sense of you know there might be a moment that feels like Calder or Matisse or could feel like Paul Clay or could feel like uh, Rachenko or you know all of these different references which I'm aware of and I, I don't literally try to imitate but I'm studying and sort of thinking about how these references to futurists and different sort of moments within the canon are there's a desire for these return to these things because of their familiarity. So these images are a lot about really color, but they're also in some ways about nothing. And I started to play with this notion of nothingness. And I was actually playing with, you know, sort of trying to understand why I kept, you know, being infatuated by these forms and pushing them to a series that became somewhat obsessive as a kind of salon of images and a taxonomy of forms and colors uh, to the point where uh, it, they become kind of somewhat, uh, to me, ironic in a way um, or, or just playful in a way. But then again, when I started to, to say, okay, well, what's this about? I came up with this idea of it's about nothing. <laughs> and then I said I was theorizing, so I had to say it's about the theory of nothing to come to understand nothingness is a very complex theory. Uh, and I was playing off the idea of the theory of everything and mathematics and how mathematic formulas tend to, you know, describe, uh, you know, ideas about our universe and the time and space continuum. I started to sort of think about how art describes the space and time continuum. I mean, my real love uh, is art and, and around art is travel and exploring different cultures. Uh, so. Fortunately, my world comes together in, in amazing ways, which is, as a dean, I have a School of Art, Architecture, Design, and Museums, so a lot of, uh, we have a lot of international programs, so I work with students in different countries. Uh, one of the hallmarks of Sam Fox School really is that we have these international semesters. We have lots of international students. Uh, we have architecture and art studios abroad in uh, many countries and continents, in Buenos Aires, and Barcelona, and Helsinki, Florence, and um, uh, our students in the summertime in the urban design program have gone to Johannesburg, to Mexico City, to Dubai, to uh, Singapore, to Hong Kong, to Japan, and to China. So a lot of, a lot of work in, in, around the world and, and a lot of travel, and related to that travel I always, of course, a lot of time in um, museums uh, and sometimes a museum is the city. Some cities have art and architecture uh, rich in all of those things um, but obviously some cities have amazing museums and uh, I, that's what I love to do. I love to uh, to study the art, to enjoy the art, to sort of enjoy the cultures, the food, the people and uh, and all of that is, is is part of making art. I think all of that comes into the to the process, so it's beautifully sort of uh, blended, and uh, you know, um, I'm always thinking, and I'm always drawing, and I'm always taking pictures, and I'm always thinking about how it relates to my own ideas in the studio or my teaching, and um, at the same time, I'm meeting alumni, I'm meeting students, I'm with students teaching, or they're teaching me, so you know, it's kind of very fluid situation, very lucky. I want your energy pills. <laughs> thank yeah. you. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, thank you.